when you were working with your energy centers, um, we talk about like our very specific energy centers. And we were just, before I totally segued, we're getting to the Kundalini energy. I love Kundalini meditations, Kundalini yoga, because it really is all about the flow between and through the energy as opposed to static, radiant energy. Um, and both are good to meditate with, you know, you know, like, again, we want to practice our scales by trying all different kinds of meditations. But when you do the one where you're like, okay, I'm working on my root chakra and now I'm working on my sacral chakra. And now I connect the root and the sacral. Now I grow it. I work on my solar plexus. Now I connect those three, you know, on up till you're just like one emanating being. That is a wonderful, almost like, uh, the light coming from the bulbs. It's a wonderful way to just let energy flow through you without, uh, like you're turning the switch on, but you're not projecting or directing anything. Oh, well, we're going to do one. So that's great. It's just a chakra alignment meditation. It's good if you want to um, bring something in because you basically make yourself an open vessel. So when you go through and you like activate each chakra, and then you have them like grow together until you're basically one chakra, one chakra that's just like open, then, you know, open up your crown and you can go to the several chakras above, like open up more and more. And then you welcome white light, golden light, you know, like divine light to come into you and through you and just emanate from you and flow through you into earth. It's a wonderful way of being. And healing sending out you basically in a way make yourself um a very relaxed vortex and then like if you're going to um say uh pathways or any of those big conferences where it's like in an enclosed building and there's all that like ah, you know and like at the end you're like ah. if you do this meditation first and then you go in you have clean energy flowing in and radiating from you. You can spend all day there and feel good. And the crazy thing is like how people respond to you when you're like this. Like I can be at pathways totally crowded. And as I walk through, everyone just parts away from me because the energy just does that. And, um, and amazing people are suddenly drawn to you and they don't know why, because you're just so refreshing and healing. So that is one great way to work with your energy. And in a few moments, we will do that. Another way is when you want to activate your chakras, like say, um, you know, if you're going to do spoon bending, and you want to like, Oh, I want to do like some really like, I want to get a big serving spoon and do it. You know, um, you can, which of course, is the exact same as doing a small spoon or a plastic spoon, because it's all the same. But Sometimes it's fun to get, you know, you might do the breath of fire, you know, the Kundalini breath of fire where you, it's almost like when women are in labor and you go, you know, you breathe in and out very rapidly and you breathe all the way down to the core of your belly and you just like get that fire building up. But if you do the chakra meditation first, then you have a conductive, a conducive area to accept this fire and it gets everything burning you will be like dripping with sweat, you know, within, if you do breath of fire for like three minutes, your energy will be so high that, you know, you can do anything and it'll be like explosive. Um, the other one is like to activate your Kundalini energy. And again, like the chakra meditation I said at the beginning, that's always a good basic one for getting everything cleared. But then you start with your root chakra and you bring that energy up and then to your sacral and then and you just have the energy weaving its way like two snakes. You know, that's why they show the snakes doing their beautiful sacred dance on up, 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 up. Most people, when they first start working with kundalini energy and they're starting with the root and the sacral, they get really horny. Yes. They end up having massive amounts of great sex, especially if your partner is also doing this. And they think, yes, this is kundalini. This is 
base level of kundalini. Okay. Um, so as you raise it up and you're activating all the energy, you need more um, connection with the kundalini rising because, of course, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes up. But then suddenly you're like, oh my God, angels are talking to me. And oh, I see other dimensions. Like it, it really brings the dynamic connection of the wholeness. And um, because your root chakra is so grounded and your crown becomes so open, when I say the wholeness, I'm like, you can go places with it. You can be like great people who have been deceased and angels and beings from other dimensions and aliens are all like hanging out with you like your posse. It's very, very cool. And you can also send your kundalini energy down into earth and connect with the crystals and the animal spirit guides. Like in a shamanic work, like are either of you familiar with shamanic work? In shamanic work, uh, when you talk about the low vibrations, you're not talking about low vibration like ick. You're talking about the deep resonance of the earth energy, the soil and the magic that there's like energetic crystalline caves all through our planet. And you can have an animal spirit guide. Often a wolf will be waiting at the portal to guide you. And you go in and you're like in these underground caves like you're playing Dungeons and Dragons only in real imagination life um, and like great beings and energies and crystals can be there waiting to share secrets with you. It's very, very powerful. And the flow of your energy with the Kundalini is great for taking you there. So when you think about it, the difference between the first meditation where you're just like activating and emanating allows you to be receptive. And then the kundalini, the second style of just imagining the actually is more active and it takes you places. Both of them will, it's a different feeling. Like, are you floating on a cloud or are you like in a canoe going down a river sort of thing? Um, so the um, breath of fire, it's part of activating the kundalini energy because you're, you know, you're feeding the furnace. Then slow down a little bit. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be like, <gasps> yeah, yeah it, it can be breath of fire is about activating your, 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 um, your belly. So whatever level at your speed for the moment, for me, I can get like literally pouring with sweat from a very gentle breath because all of my energy is focused with it. Okay. Um, South American shamans, like Peruvian shamans, do a breath work before they do their major ceremonies where they'll sit and they will breathe in on a count of four and then breathe out on a count of three, and then back in on four. So you're bringing in more oxygen than you're releasing. The first thing when you start doing this, most people have to deal with is the feeling of panic because you feel like you're gonna suffocate. But your body won't let you suffocate. You'll pass out before that happens. But you're bringing in more oxygen than you're releasing. So you're filling yourself with a fuel. So you're not gonna suffocate. You're not depriving the breath, but I'll tell you, and we are going to practice this in a moment also because it's very uncomfortable. But, um, but once you get used to it, it really gets the fire within you going like crazy. And um, that is wonderful for connecting with earth energy. I'll tell you, um, I was with. Um, a shaman, uh, Zane Kerfman, and we were doing this. And there were like eagles circling overhead. And it was like all these animals just came. There was a, he was, there was a small group of us. And the next thing we knew, we were just like surrounded by physical animals. 
it was crazy. And um, also vultures. I work with vultures and Zane works with eagles. And they were like all the birds were there. And we looked around, there were all these animals everywhere. And one fellow was literally covered with insects, but none of them were bothering him. He wasn't even aware that they were on him. And I looked and he just had like insects covering his whole body. It was crazy. And all of us were like pouring sweat after just like, I think it was five, ten, ten minutes of this breath work. And all of us were like, oh my God, that was the most powerful thing ever. And Zane said, good, now we can start the ceremony. <laughs> it was just to get our energy up. Um, but with, um, you know, with Buddhist Hindu breathing, you often will breathe in on, say, a count of eight, hold for a count of five, breathe out on a count of uh Wait, breathe in on account of six, hold for five, breathe out for eight, something like that. You always exhale longer than you inhale so that all the debris that's in your body is released. A very different way of breathing. But it really um, also helps to activate your centers. So there's no one breath work that works. It's good to work with each of these. So that, um, you know, again, practicing the skills. So you learn what technique works well for you. I found when I do the form of Buddhist breathing, breathe in, hold, exhale longer, that really helps me when I'm working with crown chakra work. It just opens me so wide. It's great when I'm doing channeling divine beings. It opens me wide. When I do the Peruvian shamanic breathing, I mean, it's not just Peruvian. I just learned it from someone who does Peruvian shamanic. But the shamanic breathing, that really connects me to all the earth magic and all the different realms and dimensions that are always around. There's portals of dimensions all around us. And that breath work helps me like, oh, my God, I didn't see that portal there. Oh, look, there's those beings there. Um, so the different breath work has different effects and you may find the breath work has different effects for you than it does for me um yes i was about to ask if anyone had questions now um, whenever i do that kind of intense breath work like that um typically my breath exercises i try to get more gentle stuff when i try to do the intense stuff i often get very a lot of issues in the throat mm. I don't know if that's, I've tried some physical things to try to clear that up, but I'm wondering if maybe there's like an energetic thing, like a throat chakra thing, like those blocks you're talking about. Yeah. Do you feel that in the breathing practice? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you're, the, there's a reason it's called a block. Yeah. You're, you are literally blocking. There's also look at the different ways when you breathe. Like, um, you know, we we're talking earlier about walk across the room. Your brain tells you what you want to do, and then your body does it naturally. So if your brain tells you to walk fast, you're going to walk fast. Like, oh, my God, the baby's falling off the table. Someone put a baby on the table, it's falling on the ground. You're going to walk fast and move without any micromanaging of it. Um, if, you know, if you feel like skipping, you'll have a whole different energy skipping like all of these movements have a different energy if we were to put on a brahms concerto now and i said flow across the room actually brahms isn't so good because aside from the lullaby he was very bombastic uh, <laughs> a strauss a strauss waltz and i'd say move across the room you're going to be like Da -da, da -da, you know a very different feeling and you'll feel that energy in your body so when your throat hurts, there's an energy happening in your throat that is impacting how you're bringing the oxygen into your body. So um, you can talk to your throat and say, what, what's your problem? What's your issue? Acknowledge, you know, and respect your throat and the fact that your throat's having an issue. Your throat may say, um, I think I need to work hard at this so that you will value me. And then you're like, 
throat, I love you. Just do your thing and I'll value you. Don't worry about it. I value you no matter what. You got my love. Then your throat will go, oh, okay, I didn't know that. And then suddenly you find your breathing different. Um, it could be when you were younger um, and because you know, you would have these insights that you would share and everyone would say, oh my God, just shut up. Or that's so weird. Or you're being rude. Or how dare you speak this way? And they're like, but I'm just responding to the energies that I'm seeing, you know. Um, you know, if you're empathic or telepathic, childhood can be really uh, constricting. So you may have just shut your throat down, blocked it to protect you from getting in trouble with speaking about the things that that are so obvious to you but no one else understands because children don't know polite society they just know reality um so that's a very common reason for the throat to close down so therefore then the throat's like heads like um as so you're on a border with guards Halt, you will not pass until you show ID and you prove that you have permission to get out here because I'm tired of people yelling at me for speaking the truth. So every single breath you take may be asking for permission to pass through. That can be exhausting. So you're like, throat, it's okay. We get to breathe now. And throat, I'm in safe place. I found my tribe. They want me to speak up. So let's just start like letting it all out your throat. Go, oh, we're doing that now? Cool. Thanks for giving me the word. Yes. Um, with mindfulness, body scan meditation, uh, one of the, which I'm not going to get into the whole thing now, but one of the things you learn is um, anything that feels pain or discomfort acknowledge it and give it permission to release so um like if you get if you're like okay i'm gonna do a chakra meditation i'm going to relax and my i've got this like raging headache right here um acknowledge the headache and give it permission to release and you'll find very quickly you're like oh my god i feel so much better now how'd that happen okay we don't need to micromanage when our body knows it's okay the body does what it wants to do. When I was a child, I had terrible migraines. Like I would literally lose my eyesight, go blind, or I'd get like, felt like people were stabbing my temples with ice picks and migraines that were so bad. I was just like throwing up and no one could come near me. I'd have to be in a darkened room for up to days, sometimes go to the hospital. And, you know, um, as I got older and I learned to work with my energy, I realized, well, I spend so much time just like floating out of my body or receiving, channeling information that when I become just in my physical body, it gives me vertigo and I get migraines. So I started doing mindfulness meditation on this and I can wake up with a migraine that is like the worst and within five, 10 minutes, I'm fine and ready to go on my day because I work with the energy of it and I allow it to like settle itself. So that's, um, throat. the other thing is also, um, when we have blocked chakras, we tighten up just like, you know, when you have an injury, the muscles around tighten to protect it. Um, you know, many years ago, I badly injured my left shoulder and it required massive surgery and the shoulder blade was torn off the back. So there's no connective tissue there beyond scar tissue. So I get whenever anything bad happens in my life that I'm like, ah! the next thing, you know, I, this whole quadrant is searing pain. And then I have to go back to the physical therapist for weeks to undo the tension damage caused by one traumatic moment because we tighten up and protect the tender area. So if you have a, a chakra that has been injured, then you get tension around it to protect it. And um, that's one reason why like highly empathic people get a lot of neck and shoulder pain 
because we're always protecting ourselves. Don't speak up or everyone will be mad at you. But I see all this stuff. I need to speak up. No, don't speak up. So we become like, you know, like that. Um, it causes our breathing to change. You know, when you're like this, you can't breathe deep. So therefore your gut cannot pull in breath. So you learn to manually use the muscles in your neck to draw breath. It's easier to breathe if you breathe with your gut and allow the neck to just be a tube that the air is flowing through. So also look to your throat um, and see about releasing tension and opening up. Think about just a hollow tube. Let the divine energy flow through me. That's it. Okay. Um, so I don't know if any of that resonates, but excellent, excellent. Okay. So um, any other questions before we? All right, good. I just threw a whole lot of information at you guys. <laughs> uh -huh.